transient loss of consciousness okay so this means if someone loses consciousness but temporarily you can write the t lock abbreviation and look at this there is a sort of a cookbook you could tell and basically first of all if someone loses the consciousness very fast it's one case so this would be like instantly and if it's gradual you can already say a bit more. If someone likes not feeling well and then loses uh, consciousness, then you would rather think of, and th this is very simple and rough division. It doesn't work 100%, but you could say it's metabolic slash toxic. Okay? So, for example, hypoglycemia. Yeah, person with hypoglycemia, he's heading into hypoglycemia, he will tell you, I'm not feeling well and whatever, and then he faints. Okay. In contrast to this, if it's an instant loss, like suddenly he's fully oriented, now uh, loses consciousness, you should think of two things, mainly, or three maybe. If it's instant, and they wake up very fast again, so instant, I still have to divide it, so immediate, lock then if they wake up fast regain consciousness very fast full consciousness you should think of first of all syncope okay that's syncope first of all if the regain is slower, slow resolution or whatever, slow, slow awakening, gradual. So he's not alert immediately, 100%, not oriented, 100%, okay? Then he could be either, it, it could be rather. Epileptic seizure, I mean grand mal seizure, so tonic-clonic seizure, or it could be transitory ischemic attack of the brainstem. And you have other videos on TIA, on the coiled so we won't talk about it. And... Um, whether syncope, there are many causes of syncope, but how is syncope defined? It means that just the perfusion was decreased. It lasted only, you know, it was due to some kind of hypotension, temporary hypotension. But as you faint it, you, you are horizontalized and you regain perfusion just by the head position change. And you wake up immediately, okay? Of course, if the hypotension would last longer because of some heart to whatever problem, then you can end in vegetative state or if it, even longer in coma and even longer brain death. Okay, it always depends how long the the perfusion of the brain is uh, lasting. But in syncope, you should think of just a very light hypotension in a way that normalizes very fast or well it doesn't matter hypotension it could be serious but immediately the pressure is normalized okay and then why am i mentioning it is this is the syncope and heart problems so first of all think of heart problems and typically remember arrhythmias and what kind of arrhythmias ventricular ones okay so it could be VTAC or it could be VFib typically okay 
or some kind of bradyarrhythmias. If the beat is too slow, so typically remember 16 syndrome or remember AV blocks. And especially remember Mobits too. And, and AV block third degree. So these all will cause syncope. Okay. And these are the ones why you really should focus on syncope because syncope in someone who's like never had syncope before could be dangerous because it tells you, Hey, there's something with heart. So every time someone falls in syncope, please first check the heart. If there is no arrhythmia, otherwise you could be in big trouble. Okay. So exclude heart problems, arrhythmias, and these syncopes that are due to heart problems are in 15%. And then you have other causes of syncopes that you know very well. And that means that the heart is okay. Heart is okay. You rule that out. And then you have many other causes. Or in 30 to 50% of syncopes, you won't find out the, the cause, actually. You know, it's not arrhythmia. You know that the heart was okay in a way. Depends. It could be hard, but never repeated. Okay. But you won't know. But the, the other ones you know very, very well because this is a vasovagal syncope. And this syncope, please, is the, the one you know. Typically girls, young girls with hypotension, if they, you know, it's cold outside, they come inside, there's humid and warm. And suddenly, let's say their vegetative state in terms of... Uh, Vagus uh, takes over, they vasodilate and they faint. And if this happens to the person commonly, it's not a big deal. You know, it happens to them and it's just a vasovagal syncope. And it's, uh, you should imagine there's, let's say, a neurovegetative lability, okay? And not a big deal, it happens in neurovegetative lability. Okay, lability. Or to men, typically it happens, and typically with alcohol, etc. When they stand up, you know, when they go to a restroom, but uh, just to uh, for micturition. But when they're standing in micturition, sometimes this it's a special type of vasovagal syncope, and it's micturition syncope. And this is when they faint and hit themselves sometimes in their head or whatever. So, so make tuition. Then you have orthostatic syncope. And orthostatic syncope, it's like in 20%. And this, this is typical. When you lay down like three days, remember your patients, if they're going to be laying down three days or if you're sick, orthostatic syncope, okay? Ortho, orthostatic. That means you're horizontalized, you're laying down, and if you're going to lay down three days in a row and you will suddenly stand up, you can faint. You can have an orthostatic syncope because your viral reflex or whatever is like uh, blunted after those three days of laying down, you know, with... Uh, so, so remember, please, and watch out with your patients. All the patient, he's laying down three days. He forgets, uh, I mean, his reflexes are blunted, and especially uh, the one that should, when you stand up, now the heart is not fast enough to control the pressure and you are having a temporary hypoperfusion and you fall down. So remember always some nurses or whoever should help the patient to stand up and to again, uh, let's say, get used to the verticalization, okay? Then you have drop attacks. This is special. This is... This happens, and there's one theory that it's about the vertebro, vertebro, basilar, vertebro basilar circuit, because they supply the brainstem, and this happens. One idea is it's not definite, but very likely uh, when you get older, you know, and the vertebral arteries they go through the, through the vertebras, okay, you know, there are holes uh, for the vertebral arteries. 
there could be osteophyte or something and this when you turn your head around this compresses the vertebral artery and now suddenly the perfusion over the brain stem is not fine and you fall down okay so remember decreased or vertebral compression or compression of the vertebral artery okay so compression of the vertebral artery Okay, yeah. And then still another one or two more. And that is situational syncope. And this happens, for example, when you do Valsalva maneuver. Because with Valsalva, you reduce the, the flow or the, the flow of the blood to the heart. And that's why then from the left ventricle, the pressure is decreased and you can have hyperperfusion. So valsalva maneuver, okay? And very easily, you can, you can make yourself very easily a syncope if you, you like squat, then you hold valsalva, you hold breath for a while and then you stand up. You're gonna faint, all of you. It's very effective way how to simulate syncope, okay? Yeah, so valsalva maneuver, for example, and six, it's the syndrome of carotid sinus. And as you know, this is the way you use, for example, to slow down a pace. It's a, with stimulation of the carotid sinus, or I'm sure they taught you, if you have a, if you have a atrial arrhythmia, you can slow down, uh, you can slow down the, the SA node and you can control it sort of by SA node if you stimulate the carotid sinuses remember or you can it's also you can use it to you put ice on the face this is how to initiate the parasympathetic trunk but in case of syndrome of carotid sinus this means for example you're having a shirt or tie that are too much closed and you're stimulating mechanically the carotid sinus or seat belt you know if it goes across your neck Sometimes it stimulates the carotid sinus on one side so much that you will lose pressure and faint. So seat belts, you know, belts or shirt. Remember that. Sometimes or sometimes even if someone is really sensitive during shaving. Okay. Yeah. And these these people faint shaving. So so those were syncopes. Syncopes due to heart problems or due to that the heart is fine, but some, something is wrong with the control of the heart or of the vessels or whatever. Okay. Yeah. And the other ones, let's say, uh, yeah, epileptic seizure over here. Typically, if it's a grand mal seizure, it takes them minutes to or tens of minutes to regain full consciousness. Okay. They fall down fast. They're having a seizure and then it takes them 10 minutes to get oriented again. Over here, it's immediate. They, they regain consciousness. With transitory ischemic attack, it depends. Sometimes they will regain very fast. And basically, it looks like a normal syncope. Or sometimes they'll be waking up for longer and then it's the, the case. So, and basically, you know, basically, you could call this all of these like transitory ischemic attacks in a way, in a syncope, but very slight one. But, well, I wouldn't like to confuse you with that, but yeah. It's ischemia, temporary ischemia that that starts the the fainting process. Okay. Anyways, so that was like how you should view clinically on the transient loss of consciousness, and still difference between a syncope and a epileptic seizure, and very fast syncope versus epileptic seizure. In both, you if it's a grand mal, you lose consciousness. Okay how you can tell if someone comes to you and you don't know if it was a seizure whether syncope or a seizure and don't forget syncope also can trigger a seizure okay but remember there is a post ictal period post ictal period post ictal period ictus in this uh, post ictal it means seizure okay seizure Ictal over here means seizure. Watch out. It's not the ictus like stroke, but it's a seizure. And in case of syncope, you don't have that. 
because you are fully alert again, fully lucid immediately. So no, but over here in grand mal seizure, the, it takes them longer to regain consciousness and that's why you call it post ictal period. It is tongue. Remember tongue. Tongue is typically not bitten. Over here it is bitten. And sometimes you can tell they have a scarred tongue so they, you can say, oh, he's having epilepsy. Okay. Uh, and watch out. Sometimes they can bleed so much so they, they can get suffocated by the blood. So that's very dangerous. Then you have muscle soreness. Uh, soreness or, or pain, muscle pain. And you don't have it here, but if you're having a grand mal seizure, yeah, it's like to, to, to be in a gym. So it really didn't, they say, oh, my muscles hurt so much. What happened to me? And it was very likely seizure. And the end, uh, sphincters. Released, released sphincters. All of them. And not over here, but over here, yes, typically. And tonic-clonic seizure, okay? So this is just that you would feel the difference between a syncope and epileptic seizure in a way, clinically, okay? So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.